Ngayon, volcano in Albay province spews lava early Tuesday morning, January 13. According to FIVOX, the lava rose to approximately 100 meters above the summit. According to Bacol Call, the escalation of parameters would warrant the raising of the alert level. Right now, as you're watching this, over 3,500 people are sleeping in evacuation centers, their homes abandoned, their lives on hold. Not because of what already happened at Mount Mayan, but because of what's about to happen. And the most terrifying part? Scientists can see it coming, but they can't stop it. What started as a routine monitoring alert has transformed into something far more ominous. The perfectly symmetrical volcano that tourists photograph from miles away has become a ticking time bomb, and the countdown has already begun. But this isn't about one massive explosion that everyone fears. No, this is about something much more sinister. A relentless, methodical destruction that's unfolding right now. Let me take you inside the control room, where volcanologists are watching something that made them raise the alert level for the first time in years. On January 6, just after noon, their instruments detected something that sent chills down their spines. The summit lava dome, imagine a massive plug of solid rock sitting on top of the volcano, suddenly gave way. For three minutes, the mountain unleashed hell. A wall of superheated ash, rocks, and gas, what scientists call a pyroclastic flow, came screaming down the mountain at speeds that would make your head spin. This wasn't some slow-moving lava you see in movies. This was a ground-hugging avalanche of death, racing down the Bonga Gully faster than any human could run. The instruments clocked it traveling nearly two kilometers in less time than it takes to make a cup of coffee. But here's where it gets truly frightening. This wasn't an isolated incident. In the days leading up to this collapse, Mayan had already produced 346 rockfalls. 346, each one a warning sign that the dome was becoming increasingly unstable. Ayon volcano in Albay province spews lava early Tuesday morning, January 13. According to FIVOX, the lava rose to approximately 100 meters above the summit. Other types of volcanic activity. Entry into the 6-kilometer permanent danger zone is strictly prohibited. According to Bacol Call, the escalation of parameters would warrant the raising of the alert level. Four volcanic earthquakes shook the mountain's core. The volcano wasn't just active, it was building towards something. Then came January 7th, and everything accelerated. Over just four hours, scientists documented 16 separate pyroclastic flows. 16, sometimes with only minutes between them. Ash clouds shot up 580 meters into the sky, turning day into twilight for communities downwind. The mountain wasn't taking breaks anymore. It was in a continuous cycle of destruction, each collapse feeding into the next like a volcanic conveyor belt of devastation. The monitoring data tells a story that's impossible to ignore. Every sensor, every measurement, every observation points to the same conclusion. Mayon isn't quieting down, it's ramping up, and the people who study volcanoes for a living, they're not just concerned anymore. They're issuing urgent warnings. You see, Mount Mayan isn't just any volcano, it's near-perfect cone shape. The same feature that makes it one of the most photographed mountains in the Philippines is precisely what makes it so deadly. That beautiful symmetry is actually a death trap in disguise. Forty deep gullies radiate from the summit like spokes on a wheel, and each one acts as a natural highway for destruction. When the lava dome collapses, the debris doesn't scatter randomly. Physics takes over. The material gets funneled straight down these channels, accelerating on slopes that reach angles of 30 degrees. Gravity turns these flows into freight trains of destruction, covering the first kilometer in less than a minute. By the time you hear it coming, it's already too late. This isn't theoretical. In 1814, Mayan showed exactly what it's capable of. Pyroclastic flows poured down these same channels, overwhelming entire towns. The Kagsawa Church, once a place of refuge, became a tomb for over 1,200 people who thought they could wait out the eruption. Today, only the church's bell tower remains visible, a haunting reminder poking through layers of volcanic debris. 
The pattern has repeated itself countless times since then. Each eruption follows the same deadly blueprint, flows confined to the same radial gullies, deposits building up layer by layer. Mayan's topography isn't just a feature of the landscape, it's a map of inevitable destruction. This is why authorities have established what they call the Permanent Danger Zone, a six-kilometer radius around the summit where no one is allowed to live. This boundary isn't drawn arbitrarily, it's calculated based on the cold, hard physics of pyroclastic flows. These ground-hugging avalanches can accelerate to nearly 100 kilometers per hour as they race downslope. At that speed, the idea of outrunning them becomes a cruel joke. Municipal officers who've worked these evacuations don't mince words. They tell residents bluntly, once a flow starts, there is no escape plan. There is no warning siren that gives you enough time. There is only prevention, leaving before it's too late. A fit adult running at full sprint might cover 200 meters in a minute. A pyroclastic flow can travel 10 times that distance in the same time. The math is simple and terrifying. That's why when the alert level was raised to three, the evacuations began immediately. Families from Tabaco, Malilipot, Ligao, Kamalig, and Guino Baton loaded onto trucks with whatever they could carry. Schools and gymnasiums transformed overnight into temporary shelters. Livestock had to be left behind. There's no evacuating entire farms when every vehicle is needed for people. The government has already distributed 6.62 million pesos worth of relief supplies, food packs, medicines, masks, hygiene kits, sleeping mats. But these aren't comforts for a natural disaster that's already happened. These are preparations for people who might be away from their homes for weeks, maybe months, as Mayon decides its next move. Inside the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, teams work around the clock interpreting data from six seismic stations encircling the volcano. During the January surge, these stations registered something that made scientists sit up and take notice a distinct rise in what they call RSAM, or real-time seismic amplitude measurement. This wasn't from sudden, sharp earthquakes. This was a continuous tremor, a steady shaking that signals magma and debris moving near the surface. The summit vent appears to be open, allowing lava and gases to escape. That might sound like good news, pressure release, right? But it's actually what's feeding the continuous dome growth and collapse cycle. Sulfur dioxide emissions hover around 777 tons per day, steady but significant. No dramatic spikes that might indicate a blocked system building toward a massive explosion, but enough to confirm that fresh magma keeps rising from deep within the Earth. Tilt meters and GPS stations show slow, ongoing inflation on the eastern flanks. The mountain is literally swelling as magma pushes up from below. At night, cameras capture an ominous glow at the summit, fresh, incandescent lava reaching the surface, feeding the growing dome that inevitably collapses and sends more deadly flows down the mountain. Scientists have outlined three possible scenarios for what happens next, and none of them involve Mayan simply going back to sleep. In the first scenario, the current pattern continues. The lava dome grows, becomes unstable, collapses in sections, and sends pyroclastic flows down the established channels. The summit continues to glow at night, sulfur dioxide keeps venting, and the seismic tremor persists. Under this scenario, the evacuations continue indefinitely, and the 6-kilometer danger zone remains a no-go area. The second scenario involves escalation. The lava extrusion continues but with intermittent explosive bursts. These wouldn't be massive eruptions, but they'd be forceful enough to send ash plumes several kilometers skyward and push pyroclastic flows even farther down the gullies. If this happens, the current evacuation zone might not be enough. More communities could find themselves in the path of destruction. The third scenario is the nightmare everyone hopes to avoid. A large-scale dome collapse or a sudden surge in internal pressure could trigger something far more catastrophic. 
Bigger, faster pyroclastic flows that could overrun areas outside the current danger zone. Communities that think they're safe could suddenly find themselves in mortal danger. Scientists stress there's no indication this is imminent, but as long as magma keeps rising and the dome remains unstable, it remains a possibility. These aren't predictions, they're possibilities that shape every decision, every tremor recorded, every puff of gas measured, every glow captured on camera feeds into a complex calculation of risk versus safety. For the 3,500 people in evacuation centers, each passing day brings the same question, when can we go home? And the honest answer is that nobody knows. Mount Mayon operates on its own timeline, indifferent to human schedules or desires. The monitoring equipment can tell scientists what's happening now, even hint at what might happen next, but volcanoes keep their ultimate secrets until the moment they choose to reveal them. All anyone can do is watch, wait, and stay out of harm's way. For those who've been evacuated, every rumble from the mountain is a reminder that their ordeal isn't over. Children sleep on gymnasium floors while their homes sit empty just a few kilometers away. Farmers watch their fields from a distance, knowing their livelihoods hang in the balance. The elderly remember previous evacuations, previous eruptions, and wonder if this time will be different. The most unsettling part? This could continue for weeks or even months. Mayon has shown in the past that it can maintain this state of dangerous activity for extended periods. The year 2018 saw similar patterns that lasted for months. Communities learn to live in a state of perpetual readiness, always prepared to flee at a moment's notice. As night falls and Mayon's summit glows against the darkness, it serves as a reminder of nature's awesome and terrible power. The perfect cone that appears on postcards and tourism brochures is also a perfectly efficient machine for channeling destruction. Every feature that makes it beautiful also makes it deadly. The scientists will keep watching their instruments, the evacuees will keep waiting in their temporary shelters, and Mayon will continue its relentless cycle of growth and collapse, each iteration bringing the potential for catastrophe. In this waiting game between human patience and volcanic fury, the mountain holds all the cards. For now, all anyone can do is respect the mountain's power, heed the warnings of those who study it, and remember that when it comes to volcanoes like Mayon, beauty and danger are simply two sides of the same coin. The glow that photographers capture from safe distances is the same glow that signals mortal peril for those who live in its shadow. That's it for today, folks. See you in the next video.